Were you able to see through the, the, the missing eye through that makeup, or were you blind in that eye figuratively and literally? What are you saying? Wait. <laughs> what eye? Is this a dispersion? <laughs> Jatha pu makukak bug bo yamane ye galaxy con yin me knock me kubabak bok ko niso. And for those of you without universal translators, welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the final frontier with some very special and honorable guests. So without further ado, let's grab our bathless and bring them up. Our first guest is an actor whose credits include Knight Rider, The Flash, and the highly undervalued anthology series Dark Room. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Klingon Chancellor Gowron and other ancillary Star Trek characters. Please welcome back Robert O'Reilly. Hello, how are you? Oh, <laughs> Robert, you've never looked better. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert, how you been? I've been good. I've been good. Absolutely. Enjoying the, the show. <laughs> yeah, the show that was, uh, the, the horror show that was 2020? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Now that it's over, it's all good. Well, uh, like I said, I, th I think we can all see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're not quite there yet, but we can see it now, and, and we're, we're making progress as, as a society, as I call it. So we're I'm vaccinated now. Oh, good on you. Absolutely good. Uh, Bow shots? Both shots. All good. Bravo, bravo. Well, Robert, great to have you here. We had such fun last summer. Uh, hope to do it on again. Let's bring out our other guests and let let the festivities and the combat and the honor begin. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Our next guest is an actress whose numerous credits include Virgin River, Black Summer, and Da Vinci's Inquest. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Betor of the House of Duras and other Star Trek roles. Please welcome Gwyneth Walsh. Hello, hello, hello. I have no puppet. I am oh, puppetless. So that's fine. But, lost. but you have a barefoot in the park action figure that you showed us. I do. I do. I was, I was showing that earlier. I, probably people can't see it. A modified barefoot in the park action figure. Sl Bator slash Ethel Banks. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Taste, I think, but there we are. <laughs> there you go. Like, what, how are you? I am doing so much better than I was, you know, six months ago. I, I was listening to what you were saying to Robert. And yes, thank God that 2020 is over and, and let 2021. Oh, my dog just came into the room. Um, Feel free to introduce us. We, I guess how we love meeting our guest pets. Yeah, um, let 2021 continue to unfold in the mostly benevolent way that it has been moving. Yes, mostly benevolent is is a very, very good way of putting it. Yes, not <laughs> yeah. actually, but we're hoping. Uh, absolutely, and, and let me just say that uh, you've had a really, really solid uh, body of work. You've appeared in a lot of stuff uh, that I held dear to my heart when they were on, uh, Friday the 13th, the series, War of the Worlds, Alien Nation, Captain Power. <laughs> Captain Power, yeah. yeah it goes back yeah. a long way. Stress, uh, J. Like Wig, yeah. 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 Well, I, I guess I've, you know, I've done a lot of sci-fi in my time. So yeah. So you 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 were in the mix before the headdress and the and the teeth. And well, let's bring out the other guy, then we'll talk about that. The other clamshell. <laughs> <laughs> he is an actor. His body of work includes Quantum Leap, Highlander, and Zorro. Today, he joins us to talk about the role of General and later Chancellor Martok and his Changeling duplicate and other Star Trek roles. Please welcome back J.G. Hertzler. Yay! Yeah, where's uh, is, is Shatner here yet? Where's Shatner? Uh, he's he, he'll, be, he'll be here in a few in a few weeks. I'm afraid he's oh, not scheduled well, for this event. Very sorry. A few weeks. Well, I'm not going to stay on here. What are you? You got who? You got O'Reilly and yeah. Welsh? No, I'm not. I've, I've got things to do, man. I'm I'm out of here. Ah. <laughs> Get that puppet gone. It's sort of the Muppet Show gone wild around here, isn't it? We we wish. You know the Muppets. You know where the Muppets started, Gwyneth? Where? In my backyard, commercials in Washington, D.C. Over in my backyard, many years ago. In Robert's backyard. 
Yes, yes, yes. No, you know, that's what that's what happens. I, I've actually altered his microphone so he can't get anything beyond the static because he always interrupts. When I start to tell a story, it suddenly becomes Bob. So I'm not going to let that happen. Just to, just to warn you. So anyway, uh, you were talking about the Muppets and oh, yeah. their, their it's commercial your ass. <laughs> Get your ass. Were you talking about the Wilkins coffee commercials? Yes. Yes. I oh, have no recollection of those. Uh, yeah. They're all on YouTube. Hey, and hey, the Wilkins. Oh. Yeah. They, um, they, are, they are demented. Because I live in D.C. So I grew up with uh, the uh, Kermit doing the uh, coffee commercials. I love it. Oh, now I understand. You kind of look a little bit like Kermit. No, I didn't, you know, Kermit was the first. But Kermit the first. Cookie Monster, then, I look a lot more like the Cookie Monster. Rolf was, was was the first Muppet, according to Jim Henson. He considers that way, too. And, what the hell does uh, Henson know? Oh, yeah, I know. Same thing. Yeah, that, like Come that guy on, Roddenberry. Man. What the hell, man? What he's so he old. He, well, well, he's gone, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, they are. Ah, uh, you know, I I could talk. I could talk Muppets and Wilkins, Walkins all day. But uh, hey, you, well, welcome, to Bugs and God Live, everybody. Patty, are you from DC? Miami? No. no, I'm in I'm in Florida. But like I said, those commercials are, are available. Where were you on born? Where was I born? Yeah, uh, Nashville. But my parents moved us away quickly before I could pick up local colloquialisms. Oh, Nashville's wow. a great town. I, I, yes, it is. It's shall not. We sing, shall we all sing Nashville Cats? Nashville Cats. I don't Nashville. know that. I water. Only if you could do it in Klingon. Wait a minute, Nashville Cats. Yeah. I do not know this song. You oh, don't it's you know your time. Nashville Cats, clean as country know. water. Nashville. Yeah. There's so many things I don't know. I can do. Or dim with you know the rest, KG. Well, we didn't do Nashville Cats, but uh, just about everybody did back in the day. Yeah. I was in a rock and roll band from 66 to 68, and uh, that was the height of rock and roll. There well, were I was a very, very young child at that point. So no, you weren't around. I wasn't paying really attention to rock bands. Mm. In 66 and 68, I was a very young individual. Well, you might have been around, yeah. Mm. You might have been two or three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not paying attention to rock bands, though. You know, my better half is uh, is uh, sixteen years my junior, and um, and she, she, I got a picture of me doing McMurphy uh, in graduate school at University of Maryland, and there's a picture also attached to that picture of her in her little majorette costume at age yeah. eight. <laughs> at the same age, for the same year, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, everybody, welcome to the show. As always, we're looking forward to the day, and we hope that is on the horizon, that we can once again host you on our physical stages and get you all back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we're back in this format, the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Absolute pleasure to have you. Team is almost ready with questions, but I just want to throw this out. Um, uh, what's, what's, what's the most fun part about playing uh, th these, this, this character archetype, which started out as the mustache twirling villains, and then in Next Generation DS9, they evolved into this warrior culture and everything else. What's been the fun, most fun takeaway part about playing a Klingon? Gentlemen, I defer to you first. I defer to age. Uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> since I'm the aged one... Uh, I, 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 it was the perfect role for me. I mean, it was like I, I, I always wanted to because I was an original, you know, the original fan of the original show, and uh, I always wanted to play a king Klingon, and uh, it, I got my dream come true. And it was like uh, uh, once you put the once I they put the makeup on me, I just felt I was there. It was just perfect. That's what I had always wanted to do as an actor. So I got to do it for almost 10 years. So made me happy. Yeah. And and then this this guy with the goatee and the stuff, you know, he made me very sad because he killed me off. It was very, very sad. I yeah. my nose at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I you know, 
unfortunately, of course, Barbara, alas, is no longer with us. But um, that was one of my favorite parts of of uh, creating the tour. And and for both of us, it was it was a wide open landscape because they really hadn't had that many female Klingons before. Oh, no. and so we kind of got to just do whatever the heck we wanted. And um, we worked together very well. And it's just always so much fun to play a villain. They're always so much more interesting than than the um, than the good people. And you guys were so wonderful. I was actually there the day that you shot the scene where you took your nails and you went like this. Oh, over Patrick. The head. And I was when you did that. I just I, I almost cracked up and ruined the, the shot. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was just brilliant, 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 brilliant. One of my favorite moments watching. Patrick Head. Yes, be still yeah. there. <laughs> and you really you, you yeah absolutely the two of you just uh such gusto and but it never it never fell into any sort of a cartoony sort of thing either it was just like th yeah th th this is this is what we're getting really really good villains really strong out there and definitely female and not from not from the press plates, obviously, too. It was, it Although was. Although that was a large part of our success. I mean, uh, I still get many, many questions about that particular part of my anatomy, <laughs> which generally I try to deflect, but. But I love the, I love the, 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 the political machinations. The fact that uh, the two characters were working behind the scenes, behind the throne to put the nephew on and they were gonna, they were gonna run things through him. And it was, it was a great arc and, I read the original draft of Generations where your characters lived, and I wish they had kept that. Yes, we were sad when that changed, but there you go. It was, you know, it was a crossover film where they had the two sets of casts, and there were a lot of people that, that deserve screen time, and so we just sort of ended up being bumped down the ladder. It's the way it goes. That's so. showbiz. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, Addie, I, uh, I was very excited very excited to be able to play a Klingon. And I was so looking forward to the gold lame and the spandex <laughs> and the costumes that cost $4.82. And then they put this leather stuff on me and the, you know, the face mix. I wanted the Fu Manchu and the spandex. And, and I, I come into the show and it's, uh, you know, it's leather tunics and uh, it looked like operatic. Yeah I, yeah, I was so angry. I was just angry. But didn't you like the teeth? Yeah, luckily they gave me a ballot. Yeah. And that was the most fun for me. <clears throat> how, how about the teeth they gave you? The, or the tooth they gave you? The Did one you, tooth. You had one tooth? You yeah, didn't that, have the whole... It, it hung like I had one giant tooth. Have you seen, have you seen all the episodes, <laughs> Gwyneth? Because I had one giant tooth. Just a one. Spinal tooth, yeah. Well, no, it wasn't a spinal tooth. It was a giant tooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too. Uh, JJ, uh, were you able to see through the, the, the missing eye through that makeup, or were you blind in that eye figuratively and literally? What are you saying? Wait. <laughs> what am I? This is a dispersion. <laughs> Are we being are we being mean to the delicately sighted here? <laughs> you know, actually, somebody said to me at a convention, uh, one of the uh, cons. Somebody said, "I, I was so he forgot. He's so old. He now forgot." <laughs> well, I was. I felt so <laughs> proud that uh, he perhaps he was he had a a bad leg or a bad arm or something. I was so proud that you, with your one eye. <laughs> we overcome that handicap. Uh, and I said, well, thank you very much. In fact, I do have only one good eye. Uh, this is a little known fact, except for the five million people I've told. Um, over the years. Yeah. Over the years, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I only have a good, I have a good right eye. And uh, the left eye is um, legally blind. And so they, they, when they first wanted to put a, a covering over my eye, they said, we're going to cover up your left, your right eye. And I said, no, 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 no. No, no, that's not what you said. You went, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said, why not? Because I can't see. <laughs> uh, anyway, I loved, I, and they wanted, to, they wanted to give me an artificial eye. And I said, literally, give me an artificial eye. He said, don't worry about the, uh, 
the wound will give you an artificial eye. I said, do not do that. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's it's a it's a, a scar of pride. Yeah, <laughs> it gets a little it's a little difficult when you have both eyes scarred out. That's tough to uh, for a Klingon warrior. Uh, <laughs> Just tell them to point me in the right direction, give me two batlets, and set me free. You're good to go. Now, it's interesting when, 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 when JG talks to somebody on a set and they say, well, we'll give you one eye. It, it's not like you're looking at a Klingon who's dressed, who's about six, you were about 6'3 in those days, and you weighed about 240. And go, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I was never six three. If I'd have been, if I'd have been six three, Bob, I would never would have gotten into theater. I'd, I'd still be playing football. But I was only <laughs> six one, and it wasn't big enough. Well, you looked a lot bigger than me. I mean, you know, you were. I you used power over me. Did no, you get like present, <clears throat> well, you all had the platform boots on. Yeah, and yeah stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the, the, I, the, I, the I, kiss I, boots, I, like all those. I never did. But, yes. Uh, very he much. Was, <laughs> but they did give one actor who was he was six. He was about six five, and they gave him, uh, li literally platform shoes like that. He was an older guy. He was probably around 70, 65 or seventy. And and J and and Patrick and I are standing there, and we're talking, and he's right over on the side of us. And then we both turned the camera, and they, they weren't sure it was a rehearsal. And then we turned around, and he was gone. And he had fallen off the stage. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. And we were both like, you know, looking at him, uh, are you okay? And it was like a turtle because it couldn't get up. Because it was <laughs> it's one of the first rules of acting. <laughs> Stay on the stage and don't step on your cape. When I was a fledgling theater actor, I did a performance of Dracula and it was on a revolve, which means oh, the stage is going around. Yeah. And so this is period work. So I had, you know, like my big, basically almost a hoop skirt. Yeah, and, yeah. and the revolve went around and I misjudged where backstage was and plummeted into the audience. <laughs> But fortunately, there were no tables near me. So oh. I was crawl on my hands and knees knew the curtain that took me backstage. But yes, it is a skill. Learn how to stay on the stage. Kind of important. Well, yeah. my, only, my only professional audition for a musical, I fell off the stage. <laughs> I also fell flat on my ass when I was auditioning for someone once because the floor was so shiny and my yeah. heels were so high, but I still got the part. So there you go. I you. think they were just amazed that I could bounce back up and still Absolutely. say my moments. <laughs> Takes a licking and she keeps on ticking. Yeah, yeah. she's like, <laughs> learn, to, learn to hit your mark. And by that, don't fall off the damn stage. Yes. You, you know, I used to talk everybody out of the robe, you know, because the robe means you're the head of the Klingon Empire. Yeah. So, and, and they made it for somebody who was six foot, foot five, who was Charlie Cooper. And he was a huge guy. And they never adjusted it for me. So I would drag it around and then I would talk them out of it. And finally one day they said, no, you have to wear it in this scene. And it was when Avery was directing and the scene was with Avery. No. And the camera kept rolling over no. my, my robe because the guy was, he was following me. And yeah. it, all of a sudden I'd be going, take one. And I go. <laughs> and they go, Bob, what's the matter? I'm being <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, because I wasn't seeing it. I said something. You tracked your beam on me. <laughs> about the third take, we figured out he was rolling over my thing. But I was, he was like, Bob, will you just keep walking? Stop it. <laughs> you make your mark. And I went, you know, and they finally figured out it was the camera rolling over my thing, my, my rope. Yeah, I remember that because it's kind of like a it was like a half robe, half overcoat almost. Oh, it? it was horrible. It yeah, was they re it was recycled from Star Trek Five, I believe. It, it, it was yes, exactly. Was it really? Yes, it, exactly. And oh. it, it was um, yeah, it, it was about sixty pounds wool. You know the heavy navy wool. Yeah, uh, was really you know that was sold in the big uh, auction that um, it was in England. It, yeah. yeah, an Englishman bought. In England bought. Yeah, yeah. And they paid uh, 
Five dollars and eighty-two. No, actually, he's about, <laughs> actually, it was about ten grand, but they had to pay taxes. Yeah, that was about equal to get it into the company. Yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. probably. So, yeah. did they? Uh, did any of you guys uh, keep your any of your original headpieces? I, I, you know, I still think I might have a clamshell or two up in the attic. Yeah, I, 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 I kept the attic. I, yes, I have an attic. I have, I have a Dorian Gray attic. Um, <laughs> and I, and I think attic. I gave yeah. one of them to a charity um, auction once, but I still think I have one. And of course, I have my teeth. You have your teeth. We all have our teeth. I have two yeah, sets. No one else can wear your teeth. I I, I, I've noticed uh, with other Trek cast, Armin Shimmerman said, uh, yeah, I lost my headpiece years ago, but I still have my teeth. And it yeah. seems like, yeah, yeah all the Trek guys get teeth because molded onto them. Yeah. I well, would wear the I don't, you know, I don't have my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. I didn't get yeah, any brain cells either. I never get them. Side <laughs> all these, the other, these guys go out, when, when they're allowed to go back out again, they'll take their little show on the road and dress up in the full makeup and kill each other on stage. You're damn that. right. And if we could if we could pay Gwyneth to join us, here's what I want to do, Gwyneth. What's that? I want a 59 Cadillac convertible. Uh -huh. and I'm going to drive around with Bob and now you, if you'll go. Uh, as Klingons? As Klingons or as what? Whatever. Or, or, or as us. And we'll do right. about the our lives in Hollywood where Oh, I, I just blew the hell out of that audition right over there. I remember that, you know. And just have you seen tilt? Have you seen men in kilts? And there's the water tower of Water Brothers. So it's sort of like instead of comedians in cars, it's Klingons in, in cars. In cars. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I I think there's a reality series in this. God damn it! Exactly. I think you're right. Or says <laughs> you know cbs just became paramount plus and they've got to be looking for new content I'm absolutely just i'm on just the phone right now just say it hello <laughs> cbs yeah the 59 caddy thing i was talking about all right <laughs> and speaking of recently uh jg you just did a voiceover on uh lower decks i did <laughs> yes <laughs> how, did, how did that come about well uh, it was amazing. I sounded amazingly like a Klingon in it. Um, I don't know how that had, I don't know how it came about. They just said, can you, oh, no, I read for it. And I said, uh, I did the recording here and I sent it over there. And uh, I got, uh, they, they said, it's going to be a recurring role. Well, that's the last I ever heard from them. Um, <laughs> so Lord Dex, if you're listening, I am still available. <laughs> but I loved it. I love doing it. He's I mean, waiting. You know, He's waiting. It's so fast. The writing is so fast and so funny. I, I got a kick out of it. You know it, Gwyneth? No, no, I don't see it. I don't know. The, it. the animated I, series Star Trek Lower Decks, which is a comedy series in the Star in the Star Trek universe, a little bit after the DS9 years. When you say it's animated now, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have heard of it. Yeah. Did I just say lower depths? You know, there's a horrible no, thing by Gorky. It's oh, not Gorky. It's, it's not Gorky. I did that play. I did that play. Yeah. <laughs> we are thespians. We have done many things. We are thespians. I've done the entire oh, canon backwards and forwards Gorky. of Shakespeare. <laughs> Every year I have a festival. It's just me, but uh, it's incredibly entertaining. And the animals around me all watch it the rabbits and the foxes and. and yes, the cows. The cows and the old are around. Man. The old cows and the goats and the orangutans and the fruit bats. I, I live in the middle of a farm. You know. While they're watching, yes. So we sell them berries. But we really should. We really should do that. So I'll, I'll be in touch, Gwyneth. All right. Yeah. Okay. We need to do I'm it. I'm not saying no. No. I All right. That. I hear it. All right. The uh, Klingons in cars uh, chat room. Let's start you know, that hashtag on social media. Let's see if we can get that going. And let's go ahead and switch over to audience questions because I think we got some lined up. All, All right. right. And this person comes from, oh, Lisa, number one Trek fan. She comes to uh, our, all of our Trek events. She wants to know how much Klingon can you spontaneously speak? Hardly. <laughs> 
Everybody. Koi puk me pu, yak ba jah ba jay shubi, se wak chu me u. Mashub manang makak cho, le me yan ba jak bo ku. Yak ba chethesh es jo ki sta, ba pu ma di bu pa rek, ba shu ka ka ma mev ka ma shu ta ma o. You know, we could also uh, uh, sing our Klingon song. You mean <laughs> you taught this to me at one point, but it's so long ago I've forgotten it. Well, let's let's try it. We, Please. We are, we are the Klingons. No others needed here. Garon Martok, the men you love to hear. Thus a bait to corporate brother Wolf. Honor and glory, you'll stick your metamorphs. If there's a problem, yo, we'll resolve it. You kill them all first. That's the only way to solve it. Klingon, baby. Klingon. 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 Ain't no Klingon. 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 Now, Enterprise ain't running, and new episodes are shooting. Ain't no ridge on the bridge. They started out losing. Track without Klingons. What could they be thinking? Track without blood. They don't even make sense. If there's a problem, yo, we'll resolve it. Kill them all first. That's the only way to solve it. Klingon, um, Even the Tricky Borg ain't nothing next to us. We out. We out. Gwyneth, uh, years ago, did you ever think, oh, I'll do a little bit part on Star Trek and it'll be fun? And and now, now this. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's <laughs> now <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> as a, the gig that keeps gigging that's what I, I refer to as Star Trek as. so and Lisa thank you that, that was we're going to break the internet well we're going to bend the internet with that I guarantee <laughs> Who, uh, Lisa asked that question yeah Lisa where are you? Where was she from did, did, did you have that oh uh, I didn't have that online I uh, she talks to me a lot through our, our Twitter and yeah she comes to all of our virtual Star Trek events she came to our and one we had we did last summer and she joined us fabulous well, so. So she is a treasure. So what do we have next? And this comes from Gene. What storyline really defined the character you played? Uh, that's uh, all of us. Yep. Uh, who wants to start? Not me. I'll you start real quick. The, the, the storyline for me that was the most effective in creating a, a biography and everything else was uh, once more into the breach that that conjured up the pain that my father, Martok's father, Erthog, felt when I was denied uh, um, admission into the uh, Klingon Officers Candidate School because I was not of noble blood. And uh, I resented Kor for that for my lifetime and beyond. And when he came back to the ship to, uh, to seek an honorable death, at the end of his life, I said, no, F you. I'm not helping you at all, old man. And, um, and I didn't. And they said, well, but, but you, have to, you have to sing the song, you know, celebrating. I said, no, I don't forgive. <laughs> no. And uh, that was Martok. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You and, know, uh, um, Barbara and I, the dress, we were just kind of plunked in from here to there, and we rarely had any long arcs. And um, so I really don't know how to answer that. I mean, I don't think there was one because we we had a couple of two-parters, but then they kind of, like, they forgot about us for a long time, and then they brought us back in just before they were going to do Star Trek seven, because they wanted to remind the audience of who we were, but we didn't really have any long arcs, so to speak of. So we define the characters that we play. That's my answer. Did you do anything with uh, Patrick Massonet, uh, Duras? Nope. The head of the Dura house Duras? They, 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 were, they were brother and sister, right? You were. I don't know yeah, if he was a brother or a father. We never worked with Patrick. Oh. We worked with. No, they were. Uh, I'm going saying um, no. There was, you know, there was our nephew, and that was it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was. It, he when he when Worf killed him in the duel, and they came out that way. Then all of a sudden, well, he has sisters. Like really, yeah, what do they want? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will. I will say, uh, Gwyneth. I think uh, I did like the appearance on DS9, though. I think that was good because it. It gave you guys something else to do besides the machinations. It was a little okay. You had a, still a scheme going on, but it wasn't 
the empire wasn't at stake because it was a little, no. it was a little more latitude for the characters. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. With me, it was really the introduction of my character and, and, um, the arc was that I was an outsider who was honest and coming in to a corrupt empire. You were what? I don't believe honest. it. Honest? When I, you see, you've never watched the shows. So no, you. no. I never <laughs> watched your episodes. You watched the show. I mean, and I was an outsider and coming in, you know, from, you know, not being accepted by anybody in the empire for a very, very long time. So I had to make up that whole, um, uh, almost the same thing as JG in the sense, sense of the class, but I was uh, on the outside. And um, uh, it was interesting because I was doing Lear at the same time the audition occurred and, and I was doing Edmund and Lear. And um, uh, uh, it was a similar character. So I brought that into the audition and um, uh, the anger and and the you know the hurt and the anger and the and the, you know uh, getting back at the empire and and trying to to get rid of the corruption you know immediately and the only way I could do that obviously is to kill Duras but uh, Worf did it for me so indeed and yeah the, it, in that episode he even says too that uh, yeah well, Gowron has disagreed with the council before and uh, <laughs> your yeah your character was the was the dark horse candidate literally yes yeah 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 and yeah. and uh, it was just wonderful going in and working with Patrick right away I mean it was you know it was like wow it's you know Wine and caviar time. Uh, oh, he was a gift. He was a little. He was wonderful, and we created a lot of the stuff that happened to be Klingon. You know, before it was Klingon. You know, yeah. it, right on the sets. You uh, were Klingon before it was cool, baby. Well, you, no, I don't know about that, but it was always cool to be Klingon. You know, I I, I love the original ones too. You know? It was really cool when I came on the show, though. Is all I'm saying. Not as not as cool, but you know. I'm just saying. <laughs> the deal with what comes on the block, you know. Uh, I, I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting for the the reboot or something that says that the second Gowron was still another changeling and the real Gowron is still around. Well, yes, I would. Well, that was an interesting wait. You know, when when because we didn't find out right away who was going to be the changeling. Um, um we sitting on. Uh, you might know more about it than I do, but. You know, I'm going, well, who's the changeling in this show? When are we going to find out the answer? Um, uh, I, I, I honestly, I, I, from what I've heard various theories, sometimes, oh, we knew all along. And then I've heard other sources say like, ah, we, no. when we had to write the script, then we sat down. Okay, so who is it? I think if I was a changeling, I would have been killed right there. And and I, I think they worked out a way that, to keep, you know, to make JG's. Mark, wait a minute, Mark, Bob. Wait a minute. Yeah. They, oh, that's right. You were supposed to. This is what I heard. Yeah, you were yeah. supposed to be the changeling in the what the fourth season when that when uh, I came on the show. Yeah, you were supposed to be the changeling. Yeah, and then they thought. Ron, and Ron Moore said this. He said we thought it was too pat that that Gal Ron would be the yeah. changeling. Yeah, and we made Martok the changeling, and that way we could just obliterate him. And we don't we don't lose the wonderful character of Galron, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but they were able to get you in jail, and, and well, it, it turned out that I was in fact a changeling. Yeah, and the yeah. real Martok was on that prison planet. Once yeah. they realized yeah. how talented I actually was, they <laughs> said we we've got to keep that guy on the show. He will save Star Trek. <laughs> Is in danger of dying. Yeah. You really got him going. You really got him going. They said we've done the big eye well, thing. I saw JJ. He's coming after you. Yeah, they said we've done the big eye thing with Galron. Now well, maybe a one eye thing with with Mark. <laughs> and let's roll another one. And this comes from Ernesto. Ernesto. Do you have any of you have a favorite writer or director from any of your Star Trek appearances? Goes without saying. I, I mean, I Ron Moore. I, you Ron know, Moore. 
uh, is you know because his Klingon stuff was just you know um, it, it was it was, it was heroic. It was that? over the top. It, it was yeah. beautiful language. It was it was easy um, uh, in many ways. And and uh, and directors. There were so many directors uh, on Star Trek that I love. Jonathan Frakes being the number one for me because he hired me and and we worked f with a. I worked with him a lot because I worked with him for about two and a half weeks doing the CD and it was, you know, it was mm -hmm. uh, a huge role and he was really support. I mean, he's so wonderful and, and, but there, you know, Les Landau is wonderful. And, and there were so many, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I, Avery directed me in one and he was great too, because we were acting at the same time and I trusted him immensely. It's easy to, I think to trust guys and gals who are actors mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, it, maybe that's not correct, but uh, it, it, in many that's ways, fair. because I've had other directors that are good. But I, I innately, it's probably me, I innately trust them, you know, if I respect them. And I, I respected, uh, you know, uh, both those people as actors, uh, yeah. and they were wonderful. You know. I did owe the Ron Moore. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, and as we can see from what else he's gone on to create, I mean, he's got quite a, quite a fertile mind. Unbelievable, mine. yes, yeah. list of credits. In yeah. fact, I, I, you know, I binged on uh, Outlander. I could not, I could not put it down. I could not stop watching Outlander. I, I wanted to be on that show, uh, so badly. I would, I, you know, I would. I'd still kill to be on that show, even though you stopped shooting it. I, 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 actually, I actually thought you were on the show. Oh, I know. I wanted to work I, with I, I saw one eyeball right in the corner, and I said, <laughs> that's no. eyeball. That's, no, that was, you know, well, no. It is James like, eyeball. The yeah, best yeah. director, the, the, one of the, well, there were several, but one of the greatest directors was LeVar Burton, who did, uh, directed uh, Soldiers of the Empire. And he understood innately, as Bob was saying, as an actor, what the camera angle does to you in terms of the audience seeing that image, what it does if it changed the, the camera angle even slightly. But he also understood what, a, what an actor had to do to be able to fill that when the, um, when the camera moves, when the camera angle is different. But LeVar, he said to me, he said, JG, you know, it's so amazing how much emotion you get with just one eye. I said, LeVar, what the hell are you talking about? You didn't have any eyes. <laughs> you were incredibly emotional. Uh, Anyway. Yeah, you spent a whole spent eight seasons with a banana clip yeah. on, his, on his face, yeah. literally, <laughs> literally. So he, he he got his sight. Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah. There was one show he had his sight. I forgot. Oh. What. Yeah, they did, and and in the feature films, they gave him the cloned eyes and all that yeah. stuff. So he eventually yeah. he eventually got rid of the yeah. visor. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And Ernesto, Patty, do, do you have any product in your hair right now? Yes. No. Is no, it? No, is it? Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 oh, Patty, you're walking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this woman flawless. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> you have it on the floor. I in got my my I miss you. I just went after it. You can never stop laughing. <laughs> And it was totally an accident. I'm like a version of Gracie Allen, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> any any, 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 any other, uh, other grooming or uh, sartorial advice I can give you today, JG? Well, you know, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there, Gwyneth. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Please, I, I, I uh, would have had about a thousand people <laughs> laughing hysterically after a pause of silence from what she said. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna expose it now. It's 
<laughs> We've done that enough. It's, it's obviously something near and dear to your heart. So if Very you near and dear. Count, it's fine. Well, it's not oftentimes you fall on a stage in full makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the actor next to you does too. <laughs> uh, all the, yeah, all right. All right. All right, Ernesto, thank you. I think we got time for one more, so let's see if we can grow out a really fun one. What do we have? Hey, let's talk about Boris. Ooh, which character do you like the most? Me. Well, I'll say, you, of course. Me. Me. In, in, in what panel? Other than our I, 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 I would say in the Star Trek universe. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I was always a Spock person. Hmm. I loved Spock. I was uh, a boy person. Jimmy doing. Jimmy doing. Yeah. Jimmy uh, McCoy. Um, uh, all I can think of was DeForest Kelly. That's about it for me. That was the be all and the end all. I loved watching him. And I love watching Urban now play DeForest Kelly. You know, uh, uh, yes, the, yeah, that generation and how they managed to subtly exactly. uh, uh, channel. Really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Very exactly. talented. Actor. Yeah. And, and still being. The, themselves too, you know, and, yeah. And, yeah. and and mesh it, you know, it, it was great, great, great. It was, it was, it was, it was never a caricature. It was never an impression. It was an absorption of the original portrayals yeah. into yeah. themselves. Well said, well said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Boris. That was fun. Ah, uh, you know what? Our producer's having such fun. She just gave me license to keep going. So let's roll another one. <laughs> and so, Katie, oh, do any of you have a favorite memory from the set? I have no uh, memory at all from the set. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it, I'm not that age. Do you, do you, no do you have any memories from yesterday? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where I have my problem. <laughs> where did I leave my glasses? Where did I leave my... Uh, uh, I, you, there were so many for me... Um, uh, because I, I worked over a long period of time. Um, but one of them was, you know, you know, the one I already told the guy falling off stage, you know, Patrick, I wish somebody had a camera on us because we were like, what the hell's going on? The guy really disappeared. You know, I thought they had, you know, what, what's the, the thing where you disappear and you go, there were three cameras <laughs> on you, Bob. Yeah. Oh, I remember the TV I show. I, when I first got on there, I had to take out a ray gun, okay, and uh, and, and I it's, went like it's this. It's called a disruptor, but keep going. Yeah, whatever. It is. <laughs> you know, my day it was a ray gun. A ray gun. And I took it out and I went, and this is why the camera's rolling and sound. It's a take, and I went, eh. <laughs> but I didn't know I did it. <laughs> and they said, and the sound guy said, somebody went, eh, <laughs> doing it. And they said, well, who did it? And they didn't know. And so we went back to number two and we did take two. And and they said, don't do that, whoever did it, you know. Right. And, and I and I took out my ray gun again and I went, ah, and I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and, looked at me like. And that's Bob O'Reilly to a T. Right? I was. And, you know, you know be, being a six-year-old again. And just yeah, at least he didn't hold a bathless and go. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. But, but talk about being embarrassed, you know. And just, I was tickled pink the first time I got to do the transporting thing that I remembered from the original series. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, which is actually remarkably simple when you do it. You just sort of stand there and you step out or it's empty and then you step in. But I could barely keep myself from giggling with delight, which would not have been a very Klingon thing to do, just because I was so excited to be transporting myself. <laughs> it's true. I mean, everything I did, you know, I translated to the original Trek, and actually I was doing something that I had watched 15, mm -hmm. 20 years earlier and, and just yeah. was thrilled by being, you know, on these sets, you know, it was just a power. Oh, I came back as a uh, as Laws, uh, who was a changeling, basically, on one show with uh, and Rene Aubergenois, my fellow changeling. Oh, took me in. Yeah, <sighs> took me into the uh, to the uh, uh, ten forward. What is it in, in the cafe in the restaurant, whatever it was called in uh, DS Nine? Corks Bar. 
all the Quark's Bar, all the regulars were there. And my job as the, as the, um, uh, Christ, I can't even think what I just said. As the changeling walked in there and I offended everybody there because he was just an asshole. So they, not only did they do good casting with me, but they, <laughs> but I went in and I just pissed off everybody. And, and Odo was just flabbergasted because he wanted me to make a good impression for some reason. And as we walked out, I said, well, that went very well, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, you know, People don't realize it. Maybe they do, but but uh, Radio Bergenois is considered one of the greatest farceurs ever oh, on the American yeah. stage or the European yeah. stage. Yeah. He was an amazing, an amazing actor. I yeah. I saw him on the original cast of uh, City of Angels, and oh. uh, and I got to on our physical stages uh, a couple of years ago. I got to, I spent an hour with him and. I, I geeked out hard. I mean, there's a line of questions. Okay, so uh, tell me about your episode of Baba Black Sheep. Okay, like tell you. Yeah, okay. Hey, you worked on the Wild Wild West reunion movie. What was that like? You know. Wow. And he and he wow. took everything in wonderful nature, just absolutely gracious, and yeah. he really was everything that that everybody has said about him. And this is Robert. How long did it take for you to put on and take off? That a lot of people tend to forget the taking off part, the makeup. Uh, well, it, it was, it was pretty much, uh, four hours, uh, uh, all the way through, um, except for the day that they put me into makeup and I forgot my teeth and I had to run back to my, uh, house, which was about, uh, 20 minutes away. And I did it in 10 and I came running up in full makeup, uh, and full wardrobe. And my dog saw me, and my dog went. I bet. <laughs> and uh, I got that, but I got back in time. That so that was five hours. But they had me there so damn early, it was ridiculous. All of us, four o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah, three thirty, three a.m. calls. Yeah, yeah, it would take three and a half to four hours to get it on, and then right. two hours to take it off. Because if you rushed it, you would fry yeah. your skin. It had to be yeah. done very carefully. You can't just yeah. take everything off. Yeah. yeah. And I think they took longer for you to get out. Uh, they, they, um, uh, Did they fry you? A lot more to do, and 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 uh, and you had a lot more body makeup too. Uh, but um, uh, we were usually out. I was usually out in an hour. And uh, no, it was like an hour. Hour. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad at all. So anybody else have any other extended or any other makeup from, because I know, JJ, you played several uh, alien characters and it seemed like they were full, almost full total face. Was there any ones that took longer than your makeup? You know, uh, Klingon? You know what I heard the, yesterday, a couple days ago, I think, or maybe it was two days. Yeah, I think it was two days ago. Somebody heard, I've heard for the first time that, and I don't want to be uh, self-aggrandizing, but I will be. I will be, yeah. 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 Uh, we yeah. did one episode of um, of uh, Voyager, Voyager, yeah, and uh, played a um, Herogen. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Herogens have more makeup than Klingons. <clears throat> they the only spot, the only part of my body that was not didn't have latex on it was the palm of my hand. They put. They put they covered up my eyelashes with little late latex strips. Oh god. Wow. Yeah. And uh but um they said that that was that was the episode with The Rock. And yes. that was the all-time leading episode of Voyager. And uh, I think it was not The Rock, of course, that made it special. It was moi. Of course. Yes. Indubitably. As a Herodian. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, no, exactly. <clears throat> As the Hiroshi. Yeah, because that makeup was, yeah, it was like a, almost a triangular sort of like a it was, face. No, on. it was a full face. It was yeah. full face, like the yeah. like Odo. Odo had a full face thing. Too. Yeah. Did, you, did you do a whole body thing too? Yeah, I had, I had, it was a like a neoprene suit over top of latex that went up to here. And it was also covered the back of your hands because it was this alien creature, you know? 
right, right, uh, right. as opposed so to a Klingon. Alien Nation, you had something that covered your ears. Exactly. Yeah. It was very much like Alien Nation. Yeah. You know, walk around with earplugs in your ears for for a few days so you could get used because it really was like you were kind of underwater when you were. Did shooting. you do Alien yeah. Nation? I did. Just one episode. Well, you know, uh, Grant, uh, not Graham. What's it? Um, Gra Gary? Graham? Gary Graham. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, Graham, yeah. Uh, Gary had no makeup, but the other actor, uh, the the alien, who was the alien actor in that? Eric Pier boy, <laughs> Eric something. I can't think of his name, but that that would have driven me crazy every day. He I look crazy. on my phone. Should I? Look? Uh, I I'm looking up. Y'all keep talking. Uh, but uh, no, Gary Graham. Uh, it changed Gary completely. He became a staunch Republican. And I haven't been able to shake him out of that ever. <laughs> Gary and I, uh, <clears throat> if I see him on the sidewalk, we, we immediately go, you know, go. We, we throw down. And uh, he's a fairly small guy, but he's very strong. So luckily, I have my bat lift most of the time. And I can <laughs> and, uh, correct. It was Eric Pierpoint. Oh, I was oh, right. You were right. You were, right. You were, yes. you were absolutely right. You were, uh, you were absolutely right. You were absolutely right. Katie, I, that was a wonderful question. And I, 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 wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I, I did, did a commercial once, and I played a Martian, and I was in full makeup from head to toe for 16 hours and the inability to do anything. And I said, well, what happened to the bathroom? Yeah. And they said, you don't. You will, but you can't get out. And that's the way it happened. Anyway. Uh, anyway, it was a Polaroid commercial. And it oh, took wow. over uh, Garner and so-and-so's. So it played for three years. March Madness. Nice. Nice. Oh, the sacrifices we make for our money in the bank. <laughs> you know, money in the bank. <clears throat> those, those, na na those commercials. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, gentlemen and lady, any final words for our audience before we go backstage? Kapla. <laughs> Kapla. I would like to sing with my friend again. Koi ke les poo. Everybody axing us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mi amigos, mi amigas. Oh, uh, yeah. Ethelbank. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> it has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today, and thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Please keep washing those hands. <laughs>